Today is going to start a series of all the things that you can do with a Sunday sauce or a Sunday gravy, as how some people like to call it. My grandmother would always call it gravy. My mother calls it sauce. It's a red sauce, obviously tomato-based sauce, San Marzano plum tomatoes. There's really not that many ingredients in here. It's, it's all about the meats. So I'm going to use hot and sweet sausage and pork chops. Some people like to use neck bones. Some people like to use ground beef, meat, you know, beef bones. There's no right or wrong with this stuff. We're gonna leave the spice cabinet alone. We're gonna let the meat flavor the sauce. I'm gonna show you every, all the ingredients right now. All right, so we have our sausages, hot and sweet. I like both, but if you don't like hot, just use just use the sweet. Pork chops, and again, again, it adds great flavor to the sauce. These are double cut, but single are fine. Tomatoes, bunch of cans of San Marzano tomatoes here and non-San Marzano. Just buy good quality and you'll be fine. That's shown DOP certified. Same thing with the Cento. This one's not, but it's fine too. Onions. Gonna use a bunch of onions because I'm making a lot of sauce. Love this olive oil from Costco. It's always good value. It's a real big pot. Another big pot. I'm gonna heavy, heavy pot. All right, so we're gonna chop some onions. It could be like a dice. Pretty. It doesn't have to be really fine. About like that. I'm chopping a lot because I need a lot for all the sauce I'm making. I'm gonna pat these really dry. You can pat them now and then right before the sear, pat them again. I'm just for expediency's sake, I'm salt, salt and pepper and them now, but do this right before you sear them. All right, so tomatoes, I'm gonna demonstrate squeezing them out with my hand, breaking them up. Remember, these are whole tomatoes. I'm showing now I'm taking the basil out. Some tomato brands, they put a couple basil leaves in. Make sure you remove that. If you wanna put new basil in, you put new basil in but you don't want to use that old basil. Crushing them all by hand, it's far easier, especially if you're using a bunch of cans, just do this in the blender. Just pulse it a couple seconds. Pork chops, going to sear these. And let's get some browning action on them. All right, and this is it. There's our sausages, our onions, our tomatoes. We got everything, we're all set. You always have a lot of stuff when you're making a, making a lot of sauce out. And then, then then it's all done. All right. So there, yeah, see? Nice and brown. Both sides. Try not to crowd them so much like I, like I did. All right. Yeah, and I'm using the rubber tongs because I don't want to damage my pot. And, you know, it, they're not being cooked all the way through. We're just searing them. And putting these pork chops off to the side and continuing with the sausages. Yeah, just fit what you can and just get a little browning on them. Again, you're not cooking them all the way through. So you don't have to get them really brown. You just want to get a little bit of flavor in there and they'll be perfect. Turn the heat all the way down. Okay, put more olive oil in the pot. Gonna get our onions in. And see, we got some brown bits down there. That's fine. If you want, before you put your tomatoes in, you can add a tiny bit of wine to deglaze, deglaze that. Or even water is fine. I'm trying to move, remove it right now with my rubber tongs. And here's my tomato paste. I'm gonna fry this for just a couple minutes in the oil before I add the full uh, hand, hand crushed plum tomatoes. Normally paste, you wanna cook out for a few minutes. It's, it takes some of the acidity out and that, that's fine. See, I'm, adding, I'm actually adding water now just to, just to get that off the bottom. That, those brown bits off the bottom, the, the good flavor. All right, here's all our tomatoes for this pot. You know, I'm doing a couple more pots on the side. Touch of sugar I'm adding, just take a little bit of that acidity out, some, a little bit of pepper, and that's it. I'm not adding any spices. I'm adding my meat back into the sauce. And this is what's going to flavor, flavor the sauce. Pork chop going right in. This is for now. You're gonna cover it, leave it cracked a little bit, like I'm like I'm displaying here. Started this video last night, and there was no way it was gonna finish in time. Woke up early this morning. I've been cooking it probably for another six hours, so it probably has about eight hours total cooking time. You know, you always want to take this spoon and you want to come over there, and you just want to touch the bottom of the pot. And if you feel any grit, like a bad texture, that could be the beginning of burning. And if you get a lot of burning, and then you come in and you start mixing your sauce really aggressively, what could happen is you could then have like a lot of burnt bits going into your sauce. But you know, if you have a little bit, it's okay. And it happens to everybody. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, so got tender sausages now, really 
tender pork chops. We got a really dark gravy, dark sauce. It's just, it's just perfect. It's cooked for a long time. You don't have to do a set amount of time, but you really want to keep to probably at least three hours, four hours. These sausages and the pork chops, the pork chops get to the point where they're falling apart and the bones themselves will fall out. So you might have to remove that. Deciding on the pasta here, I'm going to use Metze Rigatoni, which is one of my favorite pastas to use for, for a, pretty much any dish. Got the Locatelli, Pecorino Romano, the Parmesan Reggiano, the good bread. I like semolina. You know, I'm just showing the cheeses. These are both great cheeses. Everybody has their preference. And yeah, semolina bread, braided. This bread is uh, uh, it's just just a favorite of mine. And and pretty much anybody who you know who who I offer it to, they they love it. So yeah, I'm just prepping prepping some bread. And you're prepping everything for for the Sunday meal here. This is. This is what the whole meal is about. It's having all of these things ready to go. I always recommend two tablespoons of kosher salt per gallon of water. It's just a good general rule, but just, just salt your pot, your, your water well. Heavy boil, and then get your pound of pasta in, or two pounds, or five pounds, whatever you're making. Stir it a bunch so it doesn't stick. And watch your pasta. Don't trust the box directions, even though I gotta tell you, the Checo is pretty much spot on for al dente. All right, I'm removing the sausages and the pork chops. And this is just one pot I made. I had I had so much more of this on the side. And and these are just they're just so good. So good. I mean, look look at how good that looks. So I always remove that meat prior, and now I'm going to toss the pasta in the sauce this way. This is a good, this is a fine way to do it, especially when you're making a Sunday gravy. You know, I don't, normally I don't finish in a pan when I'm doing this. It's, it's just easier this way. So sauce in the bottom of the pot, get your pasta in, start tossing it. Don't over sauce your, your pasta. I mean, unless you want to over sauce your pasta. Some people like that. I, I shouldn't say don't do that. Do what you like. I prefer not to over sauce it. I like to serve the sauce on the side. This is what I had every Sunday growing up. It's just, this is the dish. And it, so this is part one and part two will be the meatballs. Getting a lot of Parmesan Reggiano on right here. This is what the family likes, so that's what I'm putting on. That's Sunday sauce, Sunday dinner. This is episode number one of the Sunday dinner, the typical Italian American Sunday dinner. You know, it's been portrayed in movies. It's been, it's like, it's, it's stereotypical, but it's, but it's not stereotypical. It's, it's actually typical. My grandmother, she lived with us. She would make this meal or a variation of it every week. Now, what are the variations? Meatballs, brajol, baked ziti, manicotti, meatballs, What's gonna happen in that one, we're gonna pair fried meatballs versus baked meatballs. That's a popular debate. People like to always argue, saying that their meatball recipe is the best, stuff like that. And uh, you know, people wanna, people wanna be like the best at things. So I would never be that presumptuous to say that my meatball recipe is the best, but I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty good. I'm gonna fry them and bake them. And then we're gonna let my kids see which one is which one they prefer better or if they can even tell the difference. That will be episode number two of the Sunday Dinner Series. I really hope that you watch. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do. This is the only food that I'm making. It's just gonna be straight Italian and Italian American food. Get a new episode out every Friday at 8 p.m. That's a promise. And by the way, leave me comments let me know, let me know the next series you want me to make. I would love that. It would be, makes it easy for me because then I have like a bunch to work on. Until next time, see ya.